The Lord be with you. of sleep for the night is far spent and the day is at hand now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed for the night is far spent let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light for the day is at hand God our Father you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in the spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptized them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptized into Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We, we ask, ask this through, through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare, and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do sit for our first Bible reading.
A reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgivings, let your requests be, no be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And this is the word of the Lord. with you and also with you alleluia alleluia prepare the way of the lord make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of god alleluia the holy gospel is taken from the gospel of the according to saint luke praise be to thee o christ John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with everyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Rejoice, rejoice, the Lord is near. May we hear his word, believe it and obey it. Amen. Well, I gained quite a reputation for winnowing and threshing. We just got a new threshing machine at Garden Organic and they let volunteers loose on it. 
and somehow I had the knack. The beans were rapidly extracted from their dried shells and the chaff went to compost and the beans went to the seed store. John the Baptist was clearly gaining a reputation and one for plain speaking. You brood of vipers! Don't take it personally. Well, actually do, and the crowd did. What then should we do? Judgment is clearly coming, and it isn't looking good for us, even though we are children of Abraham, thought the crowd. Will we be judged as chaff or as wheat? John is clear what his listeners must do. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. And he gives some examples. Sharing, clothing and food. And that reminds me, I've left the donation bucket for the food bank in the vestry. I'll get it later. Honesty. Collecting only taxes due. Avoiding threatening behaviour and be satisfied with what you have. And of course, he invites them to demonstrate their change of heart by being baptised in the River Jordan. But this is only the beginning. But he is not the Messiah. One is coming who will baptise with the Holy Spirit and fire. And this is supposed to be good news for those who are listening on the banks of the Jordan. Well, is it for us in St. Lawrence Church today? In my Bible reading notes recently, the writer told of her university English professor, who when the Bible was mentioned in the novel they were studying, commented, if I touch the Bible, it would catch fire in my hands. The implication being that she felt she was too sinful to be other than damned. Too sinful to be forgiven. Is that how you feel? Or maybe that you aren't good enough for heaven. Is that you? Too much chaff? and not enough wheat? How do you feel about judgment? Angela Ashwin, in her book, Faith in the Fool, has a chapter entitled, Judgment and Gentleness. And maybe that sums it up. Let's see what she says. Holding together our belief in God's infinite mercy and the call to the highest standards of integrity is one of the greatest challenges of the Christian life. We know about it, don't we? So often the church is accused of hypocrisy. But of course we are all sinners. But just because we are forgiven doesn't mean we can sin to our heart's content, trusting in that forgiveness. We may believe, and I do, that God can forgive and will forgive all sins and sinners. But I also believe that cheap forgiveness is no forgiveness. It needs to go deep. Sometimes we need to say sorry, but we don't really mean it. And it takes us time to grow into it. The word repent can be translated as have another mind or look at things differently. I've said before about a priest I know who always pronounces the absolution before the confession. And I always think that's distinctly dodgy. But he's always explained and invited us to look at things differently that it is in the light of the knowledge of God's love that we are forgiven. And that enables us to face up to our sins, to recognize some which we would dismiss as 
Oh, everyone does that. That's the way of the world. It invites us to dig deep. When we eventually face our judgment, we shall be like a small child sitting on the lap of a loving parent, writes Angela, safe in the knowledge of being cherished and held. Here, in that safe place, we will be able to confront the painful truth of our selfishness and stupidity. And because we are loved, we will be able to face the truth of our sin without being destroyed by it. If you've read the book, The Shack, Sophie puts it this way, judgment is not about destruction, but about setting things right. So let's be clear. Those who don't think they are good enough to make the grade, well, you aren't. But by the death and resurrection of Jesus, we are all forgiven now and for all eternity. So as St. Paul writes to the Philippians, do not worry about anything. And for those who think they are too sinful to be forgiven, well, you aren't. Tough, get over it. Jesus forgives all and everything. His words from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. So, rejoice. It is good news for us today, as much as it was for John's listeners. And if we can go on to bear fruits worthy of repentance, that's even better news, especially for those on the receiving end of them. This week, I received a Christmas card. I'm changing the name. Let's say it's from Sam. And he's someone I know through walking through the churchyard. I see him every so often. And he signed it, Sam, a sinner. Thanks for always remembering my name. And that rather sums it up, doesn't it? He recognises that he is a sinner. He recognises that his name is known, not just to me, but to God. And in the light of that, he can wish me a happy Christmas. And I can return the same words. For rejoice, the Lord is near. Christ has come and will come again. Yes, for judgment. But judgment with gentleness, which forgives our sins and helps us to bear fruit worthy of repentance. Amen. So rejoicing in God's forgiveness, let us stand if we are able and profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel, as in hope and joy we pray to the Father. Dear Lord, be with us all at St Lawrence Church this Advent time as we reflect on the past year and the coming of Jesus at Christmas. May your light and love help us to focus on the vision of your word made flesh in the world in which we live. We give thanks that we are once again able to worship together and for the clergy, wardens and everyone else who has worked hard to make sure that the Christmas services and activities take place safely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our world and for those leading us and making decisions about our current situation and our future. Help us to work together as a community so that we are all safe and so that we can look back on this time as a time when people join together to help and support each other through fellowship and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus was born in a stable away from comfort and security. Help us to remember this Christmas time, people in our community without a safe home who are in temporary shelters or who are homeless asylum seekers and refugees. Be with those who are working to help them and support them at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at this time of year, it is difficult not to think of and miss the people we have loved who are no longer with us. When we feel at our saddest, we pray that we will feel your love and comfort alongside us and your loving arms wrapped around us in our sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There are still many affected by the virus, family and friends we know who are unwell. We ask for your healing for all those who are coping with illness. Be with them in their suffering and be a light in their dark times. We give thanks for those recovering and for the medical staff and carers that have helped them to get better. May all those missing from church today due to illness gain strength from knowing that the church family is thinking of them and praying for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this Advent season of preparation, the shops are full of gifts that we may give or receive. The streets are decorated with twinkling lights and the world is preparing for Christmas. As we prepare, we remember that John the Baptist came to prepare the Jewish people for the arrival of Jesus. John prepared the way so that our hearts and souls would be ready to welcome our Lord, the light of the world. Father, prepare our hearts not only for the celebration of Christmas, but for sharing the goodness of your coming into our lives with our friends, neighbours, colleagues and everyone we meet. Amen. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Please stand if you're able. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace with a wave, a smile, and particularly to those on Zoom. And on Zoom today, let's see who we've got. We've got Dot and Janice. And we've got Chris and Jenny and Roger and Rita and Janet and Anne and a couple of people by phone. And I think there was one which just whizzed past. I think there was a, a Richard and Walter. They were new with us last week. It was lovely. So there we go. Oh, they're giving us a wave by their Christmas tree. Super. Thank you. So this is the point in the service where we all sanitise our hands. If you haven't got any sanitizer with you, then do just beckon to one of our wardens who will help you. God, our sustainer, receive the gifts we bring before you and feed us continually with that bread which satisfies all hunger. Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Lawrence and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As we consume the bread together, the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. And as I drink this wine on behalf of all gathered and all in the parish, the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. We say together the prayer after communion on page 15. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies 
to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Hello, notices. Gosh, where are we? Where we are is that we have got quite a few lateral flow tests and um, boxes here. So if you haven't got any, um, please will you take some? And ideally now it's been recommended that you do one within 24 hours of coming to worship. So the day before, please could you do a lateral flow test? I'm doing them every other day at the moment, and I think Peter's doing them on the ones in between. So between us, we're doing one a day. We won't be asking you for proof, though. That is advisory. We do have our new packs available for all those of you who are on the electoral roll. Rowena has done a brilliant job of putting them together, and we'll be giving them out on the way out. They're in alphabetical order of surname, so don't be offended if we have to ask what your surname is. Holy Dusters, Roy, we're still planning to be in church on Tuesday and doing some dusting. We can do that socially distanced and with masks on. Um, our special services for Christmas, we do have to book in for all of them. Some days we don't. So if it's a Sunday morning, just come along. If it's at another time on a different day, you do have to book. Um, including the carol service next week, but we're going to do that on Zoom as well. And we're also doing Christmas morning on Zoom. We do have our food bank appeal as uh, to run up to Christmas as part of our fruits of repentance. And I've now found the bucket. Jeff is here at the back and collecting 100 club subscriptions. Those of you who've been um, offered to do a community Christmas parcel delivery, you should have your information about that by now. If not, contact Janice, please. Um, Larry's, we had our farewell party last Thursday, meeting again in the, su uh, in the summer, in, in the new year. We had a lovely time, 23 young people, and they had a great time, didn't they, Hilda? They did, they did. And Kathy Main showed her capacity at doing a pass the parcel. So there we go. We all have our skills, don't we? Um, do be aware that Northfield Library has got heating problems, so it's on reduced hours. And I had, as well as a Christmas card this week from Sam, I also had a Christmas present from our builders. Do I eat it all myself or do I share it? I have chopped up the chocolate brownies into little pieces and if you're going over to coffee, there's a little piece of chocolate brownie from our builders. And I'm so glad the pro pro project's going on into the new year because they'll have to send me some more next year. Yes. <laughs> I think that's it for me. Over to Reverend Teresa for the blessing. Please stand if you're able. Christ, the sun of righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our final hymn. Number 295, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him. Number 295. Just before the dismissal, we had a corporate Sunday school activity of a lovely Christmas tree made from all the hands. Reminds us that Jesus has no hands on earth but our hands. So bear those fruits worthy of repentance. And Rowena, are you going to stay there or would you be better moving into the porch to give out the, um, yeah, well, Rowena will move into the porch to give out the packs. If there isn't one for anybody, you could give the one for Kathy Hadley. 
that one I can I can remember that name to redo one for her so if the I th looking around I think there's one for virtually everybody so let's hope there is so go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ amen <laughs>